Despite what some may say, worms are truly fascinating animals. You can't change my mind about this. The diverse lineages of organisms variously called worms are incredible creatures with a vast and exciting evolutionary history, and make for some very entertaining videos I think. Well, the group of worms known as the priapolids, the so-called penis worms, are no exception. This invertebrate lineage has a fossil record extending back over half a billion years, well stem group priapolids do, and are still around today, just showing how utterly remarkable these creatures are. As Worm Week 2021 continues, I thought it would therefore be the perfect time to talk about a priapolid ancestor called Otoya, an amazing animal from the world famous Burgess Shale of Canada. The Burgess Shell is a deposit located in the Canadian Rocky Mountains, well known for preserving an incredible ancient fauna dating back to around 508 million years ago, during the Mid-Cambrian period. One of the things that makes this formation so special is the fact that soft-bodied animals are preserved so exceptionally well, and this allows for ancient worms that lack any mineralized hard parts, such as Atoya, to be frozen in the rock for all this time. Otoya, in fact, is the most abundant worm actually found in the Burgess Shale, with many fossils belonging to this genus having been found and preserving in extraordinary detail the bizarre anatomy of this creature. Otoya, like modern priapulids, was a weird looking animal. Only small in size, reaching an average of around 8 centimeters long, though it could grow larger, the general anatomy of this worm can be divided up into two parts. The main body of the animal, termed the trunk in the literature, is annulated meaning it's composed of multiple ringed sections, about 70 to 100 of them. At the back end of the animal were eight hook-like structures arranged concentrically on the top and side surfaces around a structure termed the bursa, an unannulated section of the animal that could extend and retract into the worm and contains the hindgut and anus. But it's at the front of the animal where things get interesting. This section of a toya is referred to as the proboscis, and like the bursa it could also retract and extend into and out of the trunk. Inside the proboscis was the front section of the gut, and on the outside, the end closest to the main body, were at least 28 rows of hooks that pointed backwards, with various smaller spines situated between these rows, making this look like a pretty formidable animal up close. In front of these hooks was then a single circle of spines that pointed forwards, then a region with no spines, and then another spiny area referred to as multispinose teeth. In front of these teeth was then another unarmed area that gave way to an extendable sac right at the tip of the worm. Some fascinating anatomy here then, but you have to keep in mind that not all of these features will be visible in every Atoya fossil, since they're not always preserved with their proboscis fully extended. Some internal anatomical structures have also been identified in certain fossils of this organism too though. These include some potential traces of body wall muscles, which would have been used in the animal's locomotion, as well as some definitive traces of retractor muscles both at the front and back of the worms, used to pull in the bursa and the proboscis. Additionally, an interesting swelling of the gut near the front of the worm in one particular specimen has been interpreted as showing what was a concentration of gut wall muscles. The paper describing this discovery terms the swelling the gizzard suggesting that it was a section of the simple gut of the worm where soft-bodied prey could be macerated by the action of these muscles before passing through the rest of the body. Now, before we go any further, I should clarify the classification of Atoya. Although I've referred to it as a priapulid, a penis worm, and much of the literature on this organism also call it a priapulid, it is not officially a member of this group in the technical sense. The classification of Atoya has been a bit uncertain in the past, but it is now known to be a relative of the priapulida phylum. However, although these worms look very much like the living priapulids still around today, they have been placed within their own grouping, called Archaeopriapulida. Nevertheless, they are still stem priapulids, meaning that they sit just outside the true priapulid group, but are very, very closely related and still sometimes get referred to as priapulids. Yeah, cladistics can be a little confusing sometimes, but there we go. Anyway, Atoya has had an interesting journey when it comes to the history of its classification. It was first discovered and named by Charles Walcott himself, the man responsible for originally identifying the Burgess Shell in the early 20th century, and the namesake of the Walcott Quarry where many of these incredible worm fossils come from. In 1911, Walcott first classified three different species of Atoya as existing in this formation, but then later researchers revised this number down to just one species in the 70s, Atoya prolifica. However, in 2015, an in-depth survey of the known record of priapolid-like worms from Cambrian H deposits around the world found support for a second species of Otoya actually existing after all, which they named Otoya tricuspida, based on the differences seen in the anatomy of the teeth on their proboscises. This study also went on to clarify the distribution of the Otoya genus. 
Before this study, poorly preserved macrofossil remains of superficially Otoya-like worms from various US states, as well as other places in Canada and even in China, had been referred to the Otoya genus. However, this was simply because Otoya is the most commonly found priapolid in the Burgess Shale, and so it was assumed that similar worms from other places would belong to this genus too, despite no definitive features that would confirm this being preserved. However, the paper does find that microfossils of priapulid-like teeth that look very similar to the teeth seen in the Tuatoya species are found in quite a wide distribution throughout Western Canada, and even occur later on in the mid and late Cambrian too, after the time of the Burgess Shale. The study therefore explains how Otoya-like priapulid worms were a highly significant part of these Cambrian waters, being widely distributed and also surviving in a range of environments. So how exactly did this worm live then? Well, that's been a subject of some interesting research. It's always been pretty clear that Atoya was a predator. Examining the anatomy of its proboscis and the contents of its guts, paleontologists in the 70s were able to show that since the guts usually contained little to no sediment or plant material, but did occasionally preserve macerated remains of what appeared to be various different animals in the back parts of the intestine, Atoya was almost certainly a carnivorous creature, using its retractable proboscis to consume other animals by utilizing the tooth structures present on it. A much later paper, published in 2012, then went into more detail of exactly what some of these gut contents contained. It revealed that exoskeletal remains from arthropods, polychaete worms, and even wiwaxiids, a kind of bizarre, possibly mollusk from the Cambrian, were present as undigested material in the guts of Atoya. This discovery revealed that Atoya was a generalist carnivore, both preying on living organisms as well as feeding on already dead and decaying organic matter. It also shed more light on how the worm digested its food, explaining that it was a very simple process, with food travelling through the tubular gut with relatively very little physical breakdown and no internal storage of the food items. Looking at other features of Otoya's anatomy, another aspect of its behaviour that has been determined is that this was a burrowing organism. This is supported by the external radial symmetry of the proboscis, meaning that whatever the orientation of the worm within the sediment, it was uniform on all sides. Plus, the various hook structures at the front and back of the worm have been suggested to have acted as anchors in the sediment to aid the worm in propelling itself through the ancient seabeds. Another idea suggested by some is that Atoya inhabited U-shaped burrows, or at least sub-horizontal burrows according to some apparently as yet unpublished reports of Atoya preserved within their burrows. They would then presumably have used the cover of these burrows to hunt their prey, as is so often demonstrated in paleoartistic reconstructions of these animals. Something else to consider is the very recent publication of a paper describing evidence of a relative of Otoya called Eximipriapolis from a Cambrian locality in China inhabiting the conical shells of other organisms. These shells, from relatives of brachiopods called hyoliths, were being used as shelters for these worms, much as modern hermit crabs utilise the shells of other creatures today. It's thought that such a mode of life was adopted by these priapolids due to the increase in predation pressure at this time in the Cambrian, and considering that this relative of Atoya was displaying this hermiting behaviour, it's something that might have been a potential strategy employed by Atoya itself, too. So, Atoya is a brilliant and fascinating organism that enables us to get a better understanding of what these ancient ocean ecosystems were like. Its continued study reveals all sorts about these strange animals, and honestly, it's pretty mind-blowing that we've been able to learn so much, including the diet, of an animal that lived over half a billion years ago. The Burgess Shale really is a special locality. Anyway, I really hope you've been enjoying Worm Week 2021. We still have a couple more videos to come. On Christmas Day, Doug will be exploring the mystery of the glacial ice worms and how they managed to survive. Then on the last day of Worm Week, we'll be returning to the Burgess Shale once more to investigate the bizarre potential velvet worm relative Hallucigenia. Anyway, a big thank you to our patrons, especially our dinosaur tier supporters, Amanda Von Nordek, Archianthus, Bella Anderson, Brent Furman, Clara Middleton, Dhruv Srivastava, George Vojtek, Just F. Max, Corey Peterson, Mike Pace, OG Con, Persian Boy, Robert Thomas, Steve Bradshaw, and Tiffany Trammell. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful worms that surround us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.